Good morning, everyone. Um, my talk today is on night callers. Uh, but before, before I um, uh, cover that, um, night callers is our current project. Um, I'd like to go through uh, the history of our record keeping and give you an update. Um, in the beginning, um, the concerted research on ornithology in Sark uh, really started in 1966 uh, when the ornithological committee was founded and the three founding members were Frank Roundtree, uh, Philip Gill and Richard Jew. No talk on Sark ornithology uh, is really complete without mentioning our own Birdman of Sark. That was Sarkey, Philip Gill, and he was taught to ring um, the newsmiths nets and ring birds between 1966 and 1969. And he was taught by Julian Langford, um, a BTO ringer, and he, uh, his daughter runs the gallery stores and post office. Um, Philip Gill became licensed under the Channel Island ringing scheme from 1970 and uh, over the next 17 years um, netted 65,000 birds. So all that research um, was published in a book, uh, Birds of Sarg, in 1974, and then that was updated um, in 1991 with a supplement, um, mainly with the results from the Manx Shearwater study uh, that was carried out between 1989 and 1991. So I took over as um, recorder in 2015, and at that stage it occurred to me that um, most of the recordings or records that we had uh, were ad hoc sightings and um, very little verification of records and um, little or no monitoring really of, of the migration. Um, so I took steps to improve that by trying to record key arrival and departure dates. Taking that a step further, um, we now monitor very closely our seabird colonies, um, the owl nest sites and other birds of prey. Um, we also record uh, or send information to the Rarities Committee in Guernsey um, with back, backed up uh, documentation and photographs if we've got them and they either accept or reject our, um, our, our records. Um, we also encourage people to uh, take part in the Big Garden Bird Watch um, and I've been taking lessons at SART School um, with our junior members of SART Watch. And I also tried to reintroduce bird ringing in SARC um, just by having bird ringers over at strategic dates um, during the April and October migrations. Um, and we combine those with other events um, and walks, um, demonstrations as well for a nature week. Um, in terms of resources, like most island communities, um, we are very limited on resources. Um, but we do have a network of members across the island. Some of them are related to uh, Philip Gill at, or have worked with him um, and other newer members as well um, who report their sightings um, either verbally to me by telephone or email or text. And we've also got um, a Facebook page, Sark Bird Sightings, for not, not just residents but visitors to record their sightings. Um, and I encourage photographic evidence and some of our members now use um, the app, um, phone app <coughs> such as Merlin, which, which is proving quite useful. So in terms of record keeping, um, we produce an annual bird sightings list um, that feeds through to the um, Bailiwick Record Centre and also the Channel Islands Working List, which is produced by Glyn Young in Jersey. Um, in 1972, Frank Roundtree had 169 species of birds reported for Sark, um, but Glyn on the latest um, Channel Islands Working List had 226 species. And Mark Lawler, Lawler in Guernsey produces the Guernsey Rarity Report and that has the Sark um, rarities that have been accepted on it. 
So in terms of monitoring, um, we're very proud of our seabird colonies, in particular um, our Guillemot colony. It's the largest in the Channel Islands and it's grown from 76 pairs in 1968. The main site, I think, as Sue showed in her film, is on Les Hotelets, um, where there were 200 pairs last year. But a few years ago, um, the, the Les Hotelets became so crowded that a new colony set up behind the Burons, and that now has a similar number. Puffins, not such a rosy story. Um, in 1946, um, there was an estimate that there were 700 breeding pairs, um, but uh, that number had fallen in, by 1972 to 20 to 25 pairs, but that number remained stable since that date, um, but this year's numbers looking like the colony might be in decline. Um, we just have to wait and see. Um, George Gill assures me that there's plenty of sand deals about, which is the reason why many puffing colonies fail. Um, it, it could be the winter storms um, from last year, we, we just don't know. Uh, formers, um, they were listed as a non-breeding occasional summer visitor in 1972, but they've been breeding here since 1986, and there's now 20 to 25 pairs uh, breeding on the ledges around Sark, and the good news is there's a new nest site uh, just around from Derrill. Terrible Bay this year. We have a lot of apex predators um, and that indicates to me that we've got a health, healthy ecosystem uh, because there's a lot of small mammals and birds um, up, um, around uh, to support that, um, or support them. Um, on our, um, owls, we had um, a pair of long-eared owls who raid, raised five young last year. Um, one fell out of the nest and was rescued by Sue Daly um, and it was taken to Guernsey um, where the G GSPCA very kindly looked after her and she was released and is flying around Guernsey, we hope. Um, the remaining three owlets, um, uh, it's, it may have been predation, um, cer certainly the, the remaining three owlets were moved by the adults the following night um, and dispersed towards Little Sark, so it, it sounds as if um, the, the nest site could have been under um, threat. The long-eared owls didn't nest this year, um, which is um, uh, regretted, but hopefully they'll be back next year. And we've got um, barn owls breeding at two nest sites. They were successful last year, and it looks as if they've been successful this year. Um, we've got uh, four breeding pairs of buzzards and at least three pairs of peregrines. We may may have four um, pairs, um, so a lot of raptors about. Um, we have five to seven residents across the island and they take part in the RSPB guard, Great Garden Bird Watch. Uh, that gives us a good coverage and it involves particularly the children, um, which, which is always good. And um, I think it's important to monitor all the birds um, and not get too um, tied up with remedies. So uh, this is the Sark Watch Group. Um, we've certainly been doing beach cleans, uh, planting trees for climate change. And on the left, uh, there's a picture of them attending the bird ringing registration, uh, demonstration. We were very lucky to to have uh, Trevor and Leslie Borgays over from Guernsey and uh, they were joined with uh, by Julie Davis um, in 2020, 2021 and last year um, and they've added uh, invaluable records uh, to our bird records um, not least with um, the lesser white throat on, on the right. That was combined uh, with um, moss trapping um, and other walks uh, to make the Nature Week, uh, which would prove very successful. Sark provides um, quite different types of habitat, um, but it provides a lot of habitat um, for birds of conservation concern, um, most notably the nightingale and uh, the turtle dove. And the Conservation Commander has been doing a brilliant job 
um, at Pilcher Monument and Ipercury, um, where we see the Dartford Ward. Private landowners as well look after their land and due to our lack of intensive farming and low pesticide use, um, we see species such as linnet and um, meadow pivot uh, as well. And as Adrian said, um, we also see the Balearic shear waters uh, around our waters in August and September. So how, how do we drive our research going forward? Um, we're on the main migration highway. Uh, we have rarities dropping in. Um, over Easter, we had a hoopoo, and the following week we had a hawfinch. Last week, uh, a, a red kite dropped in for a couple of days. There, there are um, problems with bird ringing, um, most notably the weather, which can be very unpredictable. Um, if it's really fine weather, the birds tend to fly straight over the top of us and not stop to drop into the lovely mist nets we put out. Um, if it's raining or very windy, then unfortunately we, we can't put the mist nets up. Avian flu as well has, has added further problems and, and there's generally a shortage of ringers in the Channel Islands um, because they're quite rightly recording um, their, the birds on their respective islands. Um, the, the other thing really is that, that that all takes part of the day, uh, but the main activity on migration is at night. 80% of our summer migrants move after dark, um, and they use the moon and stars to navigate. And that means that um, they avoid predators, apart from the owls that um, hunt at night, uh, all the other raptors hunt by day. So by moving at night, um, they can they can avoid those and be more successful in reaching their destination. And they can also take um, advantage of the calmer air by changing their flight pattern, using less wing beats, they use less energy, um, and hopefully uh, don't suffer from exhaustion. And they're less likely to overheat and suffer from de dehydration if, if um, well, because the temperatures are, are cooler. So that uh, um, uh, means that Sark is an ideal uh, location for nocturnal migration monitoring. Um, we were granted dark sky status in 2011, um, so we, we have very low levels of artificial light. Artificial light at night is the greatest threat to birds on migration. If, if they're travelling over um, big cities with a lot of artificial light, then they um, can become disorientated and get lost. And certainly in Sark, you won't be hearing any car noise or police sirens on the recording. So in terms of equipment, um, Societe Cerques have invested in a song meter mini bat recorder. Um, it's the same technology as we've been using for the Bailiwick bat survey. Um, the only difference is when you're doing a bat survey, use the ultrasound microphone, um, but we fitted an acoustic microphone um, so that it picks up bird calls. And the data uh, from the calls is recorded on um, WAV files and, and they're stored on an, an SD card. And then that needs to be uploaded into some sort of software uh, to identify what uh, what firms you've actually heard on the on the farm, um, there's various software packages: Kaleidoscope, Audacity, are, are two of them. Um, the calls are converted into a spectrogram, um, and that measures time, frequency, and amplitude of the call. And it's possible um, from the spectrogram to actually identify what type of bird is calling. Um, the, the problem with that is you, you, you have to listen to a whole night's recordings and, and label them a bit individually, which takes a long time. Uh, this is a screenshot of Merlin, uh, which is a phone app, and that actually tells you what type of bird um, it is calling. Um, so 
we're working with the Bridges Trust for Ornithology. Um, they are um, developing a bird identification um, software through their BTO acoustic pipeline. It will give us high quality eco ecological data, verifiable data, um, which can be quality checked. Um, there will be metadata, uh, so it will be date stamped um, and survey protocols. <coughs> There's two, um, two classifiers that we're interested in. Uh, the main one is the uh, migration, nocturnal migration um, calls, and uh, the European nocturnal flight calls uh, classifier identifies 50 species, um, mostly crates and rails, waterfowl and waders, and and the passerines. Um, but the uh, and the main aims of the migration survey are to increase species detection contribute to the research, and uh, research has shown that um, certainly manual me uh, acoustic monitoring is more accurate than the manual survey methods. And obviously, ultimately, we want to increase the, the species list from, from the 226. But the really interesting um, part or exciting part is that uh, the nocturnal breeding birds um, classifier will also enable us to monitor our owl um, breeding sites, um, but more interestingly, um, night jars that make a, a regular visit to the island in April and May. Um, the, they've developed a classifier that specifically um, indicates that the birds are breeding uh, by picking up the churring and, and the other calls that the night jars make. Um, so it'd be really great. I think night jars already breed in Jersey, so it'd be lovely if they, they were breeding here. Um, crates and woodcock are also on the software, but they, they, as far as I know, don't breed here. Acoustic monitoring, um, it, it um, doesn't interfere with the birds. Uh, there's little disturbance um, to the nest sites. You, you can put the equipment up, the battery life lasts a long time and it enables us to target um, specific species and it's very cost effective. Uh, the software is at no cost um, and I think we get 100 gigabytes of storage um, which is certainly more than enough for, for our purposes. Um, so the uh, Night Callers uh, project we hope will enhance our records, contribute to the science and also be uh, a living legacy in memory of the Sartre. <laughs> <laughs>